Okay, welcome to everyone to our Connected Falkirk 2 for Your Toolkit Session 2. I'm Andy, part of the Connected Falkirk team. We have the full team on today to help facilitate this synchronous CLPL offer. In this session, we'll be dividing, uh, diving into two feedback tools that can be used in the classroom. With the main aim being to ensure that we make today's session easy to follow, show how it can be useful to you, and how it can be compatible in your classroom. If you have any questions during the session, please post them in the chat, and we will hold on at the end to answer any of these questions. Any links that will be required during the session will be posted in the chat as we go through. So without further ado, I'd like to hand you over to Mary Jane to get us started. Thanks, Andy. Hi, everyone. If you were on our last session, you'll have seen Andy's quick demo of markup. So we're going to start today by going to markup and having a little bit of a closer look at some of the tools there. So markup is a feature on your connected Falkirk device with the ability to edit screenshots and photos. And for teachers, it can prove to be quite a handy tool to provide some written feedback or for marking pupils' work as well. So I'm going to mark up a photo of a piece of work that I've saved from earlier, and I'm going to find that in my Photos app. So I'm going to tap on the Photos tile, which is the white tile with a kind of coloured flower icon on it. So I'm going to open that. And you'll see that it takes me to all my photos there that have been saved on my device. So I'm going to select the photo that I need, which is this one here. And it's a piece of creative writing. So I want to mark it up. I'm going to tap on edit, which is in the top right hand corner. Now, the next set of options I want to look for is markup. I'm going to find that in the little ellipsis, which is the wee circle with the three dots in the top right. And you can see that markup is an option. So I'm going to tap on that. Now, if the photo you've taken has been a live photo, it will give you that little warning that you might have seen come up there, just to say that when you use markup, it will take it off being a live photo. But that's absolutely fine. I just tapped OK. So your toolbar will appear at the bottom or it may be in the bottom left hand corner of your screen now. So I'm going to use the various tools and to help me today, I'm going to use the success criteria that's at the top of this piece of work. I'm going to start by using the highlighter tool. Now it's currently pink at the moment and I'm going to use that to look at the first set of criteria. It's asking me for three things I can see at the beach. So I can easily highlight some of the criteria in this piece of work. Now I'm just using my finger for this, but if you do have a stylus or an Apple pencil, it will work with that as well. I can change the colour, so I'm going to change the colour here. You can see I've got a range of colours to choose from. I'm going to choose purple. And I'm going to have a look at the next piece of criteria. It's asking me for things I can do. Perfect. Now, if I tap again on my highlighter, you'll see it gives me the option to increase or decrease the thickness. Or also, using the slider, I can increase or decrease the opacity, which is really handy if you are using a highlighter. Now, as I go, I'm going to highlight along the top here just to make sure that I'm covering all the criteria from my success at the top. The next tool we'll have a look at is the pen tool. This is going to allow me to draw or write directly onto this photograph. So if, for example, I had a little mistake somewhere, I'd be able to circle it. Or if I was using a marking code, I could insert some of the marking code onto my picture quite easily. Again, I'm just using my finger at the moment, so it is really easy to do. I could also use the pencil, which I'm going to use at, for the next criteria. It's asking me for an underlined title. Now, this pupil's forgotten to do that. I do have a ruler on hand, which is great. So I'm going to straighten that up and use the pencil there. You see the pencil is a slightly finer tool, but I can increase and decrease the thickness as well by double tapping on it again. 
Now, I've also got an eraser here, which will allow me to rub out. You see, I made a little mistake, which is great. I can select the eraser to either be a pixel eraser or an object eraser. Now, if it was pixel, it allows me to erase smaller parts at one time. An object eraser will allow me to erase whole objects at a time and get rid of them. The lasso tool, which is next in the toolbar, will let you move items on your page to wherever you want. So I simply select it, draw around the object, and as you can see there, I can move it anywhere on my screen. Now, for the next criteria, I want to highlight some of the words that the pupil's chosen, but I don't want to use the highlighter this time. I want to do something a little bit different. So I'm going to use shapes for this. And I'll find shapes by tapping on the plus. Mm -hmm. And you can see that I have the option of square, circle, or there is also a speech bubble, but I'm just going to choose square at the moment. And when my screen catches up, you'll see that it should pop up in the middle. There we go, you can see it now. And I'm able to move that shape and then resize it anywhere on my screen. So for the purpose of the criteria, I'm going to resize it over the word bobbing, which describes the boats on the sea. And I can move it and resize it to be as accurate as I need it to be. Some other options that you might see in your toolbar are the undo and the redo. Do you see there it has moved my square? And also within that plus again, you have the option of a magnifier, which will increase the text size on anything within that photo. Now, I'm going to add a couple of final bits of feedback and I'm going to do this by adding text this time. So again, I'm going to tap on the plus sign and it's the top option of text. And that will pop up in the middle of my screen, as you can see there. Now, to insert the text, I double tap on that word text and you can see my keyboard popped up. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to add an emoji and I'm going to use it a bit like a sticker. And I'm going to move it and pop it over next to that square that I've added earlier, just to really reinforce that I like that word choice there for the pupil. And again, you can add text and you can type any kind of message, any type of feedback. I'm going to keep it quite short for the purpose of this demo, but you can add as much as you like. If you wanted to even do two stars and a wish, you could do that as well. And I'm just going to move it up there so it's easier to be seen. Now that I've marked up this piece of work and I've added the feedback that I want to do, I'm going to tap done in the top corner, which will take me back to that initial screen that we saw going into markup. And I'm going to tap done again, and that now saves it into my photos. What I now want to do is I want to save it to my OneDrive, and then I can go and send the link on to the pupil. So to do that, I'm going to tap on the share icon in the top corner. You can see I have different options, but I'm going to go down and I'm going to tap on Save to Files. There we go. Now, all the options I have, I've got my Google Drive set up, I've got my iCloud Drive, but as I said, I want to save it into my Glow. So I've tapped on Files there and I'm simply just going to tap on Save. And that's it now saved into my OneDrive. So what I can do is pop over to my OneDrive I can copy that link and then I can send it on to the pupil in whichever virtual learning environment we are using there. So that's a slightly more in-depth look at markup for providing people feedback. I hope you found that useful and you can see how you can use it in your own context and in your own settings. I'm going to pass you back over to Andy now. Brilliant. Thanks, Mary Jane. So I'm sure you'll agree that Markup is a great tool that allows you to provide personalised feedback within your own setting. I'd like now to pass you over to Gav for the second tool in the toolkit for this session. Gav, over to you. Thanks very much, Andy. And thanks, Mary Jane. Personally, I love using Markup as a means of 
giving written feedback to pupils on their work. Now, I'm going to talk to you about an alternative method of giving pupils that feedback. We all know that we can speak faster than we can write. And we also know that verbal feedback is a really powerful way of supporting pupils in their learning. Now, you can access the benefits of verbal feedback by using audio recorder in GarageBand. And I'm going to show you that now. So start off by opening up the GarageBand app, which is the image of the guitar in the kind of red and yellow app tile. And the first screen that you will see when you open up the app is your project screen. Now, I'm quite keen on this app, so I've got quite a few on the go. If it's your first time, just simply tap the plus at the top to open a new project. And that's then going to take you to the instrument selection screen. Now, it will normally open up on audio recorder, but if not, you can swipe your finger left and right to cycle through the instruments until you find the microphone icon with audio recorder. And you just want to tap at the bottom left of that where it says voice with the picture of the microphone. That will now take you in to the recording screen. The garage band is all set up for recording songs and music, so a lot of the language will be around singing. Now, you are, of course, free to sing your feedback to your pupils if you want. I'm not going to inflict that on you this afternoon. I'm going to change lead vocals by tapping on it and scroll down to narrator. And that's just going to take away some of those settings that might be more appropriate for a singer. And it's going to give me a nice clean recording of just a vocal recording. Now, before you start recording, there's a couple of really important steps. The first is to tap on the plus at the top right of that window and then tap on section A where it says eight bars. And the little button next to automatic, you have to tap on that to press it on. And what that does is it means that you can record for as long as you need to. You're not limited by any number of bars. Tap anywhere on the window to remove that message. And the final thing to do before you record is to switch off the metronome, which is the little blue triangle just above the seven on my window at the moment. By tapping on that, it will then go white. And that means your metronome is now off. So now you are ready to record. So I'm going to record a little bit of fake feedback here, the kind of thing that you would, I'm sure, respond to a pupil with. Simply tap on the red circle at the top to begin recording. And when you do that, you'll notice that the strip at the top where the numbers are will turn red, which tells you that it is live recording right now. And when you're finished and you press stop, it will go blue to show that something has been recorded. So let's try that now. There'll be a four click countdown. Thanks very much for submitting this work. Um, it's a very stylish piece of writing. I can see that you've improved your sentence structure for the last time, and you're now no longer running sentences together using connectives. I was also impressed by the varied and sometimes complex vocabulary in this piece. You've also used a range of persuasive techniques. I noticed repetition, flattery and alliteration, so well done there. For next time, try to add some more clear linkage and topic sentences to give your writing more of a clear structure. But overall, you should be really proud of yourself. This is an excellent piece of work. So tap on stop to finish. So that was maybe about 30 seconds worth of recording, and I feel like I packed in quite a lot of feedback. Obviously, the most important thing from here is to share this with pupils. So I'll show you how to do that next. If you can locate the icon that's the third from the top left, it's the little squares all piled on top of each other. It looks a little bit like a game of Tetris. If you tap on that, it's going to take you to your track view, and that will show you a wave file of the recording that you just made. And you can listen back to that by pressing on play, and then you can rewind to go to, to different sections. Now, before you share, you might want to edit some parts out. You can tap anywhere on that timeline to move the arrow to where the four is. And if I then tap on the blue strip, I'll get the option to split in the middle of the options there. And a little pair of scissors appears. And then I just slide my finger down on the scissors to split the audio file there. I can then drag to a later part and split again. So I'm imagining maybe I had hesitated in the middle here or there was a cough or something. I can then select this bit to isolate it, tap on it, and delete is the third option from the left. And I could then drag the rest of my recording back in to create one complete recording with no hesitations or coughs or anything like that. Now, the whole point of this is that you can give feedback quickly. So I don't imagine that you would be spending a lot of time editing the file, but those options are there if you need them. Now to share this back with the pupil. Tap on the folded page at the top left of your window. And that's then going to take you back to that initial project summary screen. Now, it's defaulted to My Song 6, so I'm going to double tap on the name of that file. 
apologies. I'm just going to make sure that I get this right. I can then select the name of the file and type in anything that I want. So I'll probably want to put the pupil name and maybe the type of work that they were doing so I can identify it at a later time. So that would have been persuasive writing. So now I've got a clear name from a project. Now to share it, hold your finger on the summary tile there and you have the share option appearing at the bottom of that list. So tap on share and you want to select song. And medium quality is good enough. It's a small enough file to share on cloud spaces, but it will still sound good. Tap share at the top right and you'll get a little option now to where you want to share that to. It's got a number of options. You could put it into a specific app like OneNote you can see there, or you could put it into your virtual learning environment like Teams or Google Classroom. You also have options to save it directly to a cloud space like Google Drive or OneDrive. For now though, I want to put it onto the iPad itself. So when I tap on open in, in the middle there, you'll get a brief exporting song progress bar. But hopefully it doesn't take too long for just a 30 second recording. And now I have the option to save to files. So this is me now within the iPad itself. I've got a folder there called feedback um, as part of my garage band folder. And I'm just going to save it directly into there. So I've now got that safe on my iPad. From here, I can return to my home screen by pressing the home button twice. And I'm now going to locate this in files in order to just show you where it went. So I can check it's in GarageBand and the file is now sitting in files. Now from here, I'm going to share it to my Google Drive. So by tapping and holding on that, I can once again tap share. And this time I'm going to select Google Drive just need to tap on the account here and I can tap on select folder at the bottom, go into my drive. And again, I've got a folder called pupil feedback files, tap on that to open it and save here as the option at the bottom right. And then upload at the top right of the window should very quickly put that M4A file into my Google Drive. And the advantage of doing that is that I can now go into Google Drive and locate that folder pupil feedback files. And I'll see the recording there as an M4A. If I tap on the ellipsis at the right hand side, I can copy that link. And once I've got the link copied, I can go into Teams or Google Classroom or wherever the people had submitted that work and share that link with them. And they're going to be able to then tap on it to listen back to my audio feedback. <clears throat> so that is how you can use GarageBand to share verbal feedback with your students. And with that, I'm going to pass back to Andy. Brilliant, Gav, thanks very much. So I'm sure you'll agree that both feedback options are very useful in all educational settings. They allow you to customise the feedback that you can provide to your pupils. So that's the session finished from us. And obviously you're free to go. But before we head off, I am just going to quickly post the feedback link in the chat. Now, I'm sure you'll agree that Obviously, both of those have been very, very helpful. So if you have any questions, please feel free to put them in. As I said, we really appreciate the feedback on this session today. And the feedback link is in the ch chat. So if you have any questions, please post them into the chat. We will then get to answer those just now. But once you've completed the feedback, you're free to go. Thanks very much for your time.